Today we're going to get a background and introduction into George Orwell's Animal Farm. Starting with the author George Orwell, Orwell was a political writer who wrote about the social ills of the strict class structure in England, his home country. Now he was a socialist, believing in total equality for all citizens. Now he saw firsthand the corruption of communism in Spain when those in power began to take advantage of the citizens. Because he was reporting for the BBC at the time, he was able to go and take a look at their war. Now the, his hatred of totalitarianism and the abuse he witnessed in the name of communism in the 1930s in Spain prompted him to write Animal Farm. Well, what is Animal Farm? Well, some people would say it's a fable. A fable is usually a short narrative making an edifying or cautionary point and employing as characters animals that speak and act like humans. So these animals that are going to be a humanistic-like character are going to make a cautionary tale. We're going to learn something from them. Some people call Animal Farm an allegory. Now that would be the representation of abstract ideas or principles by characters, figures, or events in narrative, dramatic, or in pictorial form. For example, the blindfolded figure with the scales is an allegory of justice. So if we're looking at Animal Farm as an allegory, we might, might be thinking of the political ideals, the ideas of communism, maybe even perhaps characters that we could name that are now being represented by the animals in the story. So if we're looking at the allegory in the novel, because of Orwell's time period that he's looking through in the 1920s, the 30s, the 40s, we have a tendency to see the people that we might assume go along with the idea of totalitarianism and communism. For example, starting off in chapter one with the oldest we would have, that'd be Farmer John Jones. He would, you might perhaps see Tsar Nicholas II in there, which is a pre-fashion or a precursor to communism. Now, Old Major might represent Karl Marx, who has invented the idea of communism. Then we might look at Boxer the Horse as being part of the unskilled labor class. The people that would be the common man. He's going to represent a lot of that labor class. Now, Squealer might represent a communist newspaper, in particular a Russian newspaper here. We also have Molly representing the skilled middle class, where Box of the Horse is the unskilled labor. Molly is going to be the skilled labor. Now, Moses the bird is going to represent the idea of religion and how they can rise above all of the political ideas and at the same time be worked with uh, and get themselves worked into this particular political ideal. And as we start looking at some of the more main characters, such as Snowball and Napoleon, we might start seeing them represent more communist figures, such as Snowball being Trotsky and Napoleon being Stalin. Now, the dogs that we see might perhaps represent the KGB police or some sort of totalitarianism police that would be used upon the labor class if they are not going the way that the leaders want them to do. And of course, we have neighboring farms, which would represent neighboring countries. So perhaps Pilkington might represent Churchill, which would be more of the Western ideal view, the democratic view. And Frederick, who might perhaps be Hitler, who'd be representing more of a socialistic, more of a totalitarian point of view. Now, the manor farm that we have our setting on would represent the Soviet Union and the windmill, a sense of industrialization being brought to the Soviet Union. Some people also read The Animal Farm for satire. Now, satire is a literary work in which human vice or folly is attacked through irony, through sarcasm, downright derision, or maybe some witty humor. A lot of people also will look in Animal Farm for propaganda. Now, propaganda is the systematic attempt to spread ideas or beliefs. Now, the information given in propaganda may or may not be accurate. 
Now, facts that support the ideas being promoted will be given accurately. Now, facts that contradict your ideas being promoted are either going to be withheld and not spoken, or those are going to be inaccurate. Lastly, we're going to be looking at the ideas of stereotypes in Animal Farm. Pigs usually have a bad name in this story for the idea of selfishness and gluttony. They seem to have everything. Horses are going to be slow-witted, but also shown as strong, gentle, and loyal. Again, these are the workers, the hard workers on the farm. We also have sheep that are brainless and behave as a flock without individual initiative. So you have the sheep as representation as people who just go along with whatever society is telling them to do without question. The major conflicts, watch out for the animals versus Mr. Jones in the beginning. And then watch as your two pigs, Snowball and Napoleon, first work together and then don't. Once the pigs are in control, watch the difference between the common animals versus the pigs. And then once we do see Manor Farm settling into Animal Farm, watch how Animal Farm is different versus the neighboring humans. Now all are expressions of the underlying tension between the exploited and the exploiting classes, between the lofty ideals of politics and the harsh realities that would come in socialism. When we take a look at the setting of Manor Farm, it is at the very beginning a dictatorship that is done by Mr. Jones. And after the animals revolt, they rename it Animal Farm. The novel takes place on an imaginary farm in England. Animal Farm is set in an unspecified time period. And readers can assume that Orwell means the fable to be contemporary with the object of its satire, the Russian Revolution. So sometime between 1917 to about 1945. Your major themes in Animal Farm. You might want to watch for the corruption of the socialist ideals in the Soviet Union because you're going to see the same corruption ideals in Animal Farm, which they call animalism. The societal tendency towards class stratification where some animals are better than others. The danger of a naive working class. We talked about the sheep who just go along with anything without question, but you might also see other animals kind of thinking that they would like to go along with what is being told and then being <coughs> fearfully pushed into what they have to do. The abuse of language as instrumental to the abuse of power. Uh, the freedom of the press is usually one of the first things that goes in, in a democracy uh, as we start moving towards a dictatorship. So watch as the abuse of power starts taking away people's rights to speak. And absolute power will absolutely corrupt in this story. There's also the third person omniscient point of view here where the narrator is completely uninvolved and attempts to be non-judgmental. That'll do it for your introduction of Animal Farm. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you would like me to read through the story chapters and help you along with the book, please put some comments down below. Let me know what more you'd like to learn about George Orwell or Animal Farm. And as always, I'd appreciate it if you subscribed. Thanks for stopping by.